Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In this age of increased access, refrigeration, and corporate farming, it's hard to know how the meat you consume was raised and fed. There are all types of flash advertising words that are designed to upsell and confuse the hell out of you. Words like organic, grass-fed, non-GMO, free-roaming, non-dark side. The list goes on and on, and a lot of these words aren't even regulated by the Galactic Empire, so... What does it all mean? Sure, that Ewok meat you just bought was free roaming and not given any antibiotics, but did you know a recent Galactic Daily News survey found that one out of four free roaming Ewoks have fed on human or other sentient being flesh? I mean, no one wants to be a cannibal on purpose, I hope, but being a cannibal by accident is almost even worse. So that's why there's been a recent move amongst health-conscious citizens of the galaxy to return to the old ways and hunt for their food. We here at Generation Tech wholly support the idea that you guys are going out there and hunting for a more sustainable and healthier food source. So that's why today we've put together a list of 10 tips for those of you guys who are interested in hunting Ewoks. The Ewoks are an extremely primitive race, and because their moon lacks any stock animals that can be domesticated, as a civilization they were never able to develop farming and food surpluses. Therefore, a large amount of the Ewok society's energy is still expended on finding food. This doesn't give them time to develop things like reading, higher education, and other things that develop a culture into something more complex. While the Ewoks did have fishing villages and forage for various edibles on the forest floor, hunting by far was one of the most important sources of food for their species. This meant a lot of Ewok culture and tradition surrounded hunting and hunters were an important part of the tribe. But don't let their diminutive size fool you. These Ewoks have had centuries to develop different tactics and tools to take down animals far larger than a human being. Am I not wearing underwear? So Ewoks mainly use pre-gunpowder era type of weapons and tools. This includes bow and arrows, slingshots, knives, stone clubs, and spears. While not the most dangerous weapons in the world, the Ewoks were able to use these weapons to successfully defeat an entire Stormtrooper Legion. The stone tip piercing weapons were apparently thick enough to penetrate Imperial Stormtrooper armor at the joint areas and take out soldiers. Although it should be mentioned that there are rumors some Ewoks use neurotoxins on their bladed weapons, including the arrows, and this neurotoxin essentially prevents a person from breathing by paralyzing their entire body. Another reason why these relatively primitive Ewoks seem to be able to defeat technologically superior and larger stormtroopers is because of their superior strength. As we witnessed during the Battle of Endor, Ewoks were able to take down much larger prey with these primitive weapons. Sometimes they even do it without the weapons. Ewoks would oftentimes knock down bigger prey like stormtrooper, pin them to the ground, remove their helmets, and then bludgeon their faces with rocks or slit their throats with knives and then eat their enemies' flesh. Their bones and muscles were so strong that they were able to survive huge drops with little consequence. Some lucky humans who have survived encounters with them called these furry bees miniature Wookiees. The average Ewok grows to only one meter tall and weighs around 50 kilos. Yet they hunt humans with the mindset of a predator and not a prey. They're basically fearless. Why is that? Well, humans are much weaker and smaller than some of the other animals on their planet that they routinely have to deal with. In order to tackle larger beasts like the boar wolves, the Ewoks had to develop an assortment of ingenious traps that work well on both organic beings as well as machines. Hey, I don't get it. Eh, it's just a dead animal, Chewie. Chewie, wait, wait, don't! <laughs> Before you start your trip, make sure you're familiar with these types of traps that the Ewoks commonly use, including net traps, log traps, rope traps, rock traps, pit traps, and so on. In general, when on Endor, always make sure your head is on a swivel and avoid areas that have disturbed foliage or topsoil. These traps are powerful enough to destroy an ATST walker, so you don't want to see what it can do to a human being. Now, if you're only used to hunting non-sentient game like dolphins and flat earthers, I do recommend you guys take a refresher course on higher level hunting techniques. 
Although not the smartest animals in the galaxy, these furry little beasts have managed to build an entire village in the tree layers above the forest. These villages are usually connected together by a series of walkways. This means the Ewoks can more or less travel freely without being noticed by larger predators and also consequently any hunter looking to find them. This also gives them a great place to set up ambushes and assaults on unwary travelers, and it's also a great place for them to observe the many traps that they have laid on the forest floor. So always make sure to keep your head constantly scanning, not only at the ground level, but also in the tree canopy on top of you. If you do find yourselves in an area covered by walkways, I suggest you quickly turn around. Ewoks, while powerful, have short stubby legs, and when you're in the open space, you can easily outrun them as long as you see them coming. But they can and will jump on you from above and other hiding places, and if an Ewok lands on your face, it's basically like a pit bull locking on with its jaws, but instead of teeth, it has furry paws with deadly claws. The Imperials who survived the initial onslaught of the Ewoks during the Battle of Endor thought that they had gotten through the worst of it. Sure, the Death Star exploded, probably killing tons of their friends, and now the future of the Empire is in danger because the Emperor was betrayed by Darth Vader... But hey, what's the worst that can happen, right? Well, if you think Ewoks are bad during the day, wait till you see them during the night, or not see them. As we talked about before, you can usually outrun an Ewok if you can see it coming. But at night, they can basically hide anywhere in the underbrush, and before you know it, you're covered in your own blood, paralyzed from the waist down from blunt force injuries to your spine and being dragged into a cooking pot. You see, Ewoks are actually nocturnal animals, and they love to hunt at night. One of their favorite tactics is to attack their enemies from their tree villages and, and ambush them. If it's a larger group like the survivors of the Battle of Endor, Ewoks use the projectile known as Wisty Pouches. These were basically half incendiary grenades and half flashbangs. Wisty Pouches were full of tiny forest sprites that could set things on fire on touch. When the pouch hit something, the Wisties would emerge and attack like a swarm of bees, but instead of stinging, they blinded their enemies with fire. While the stormtroopers were disoriented, the Ewoks would ambush them, pin them down, remove their helmets, slit their throat, and consume their flesh. And that's not all, Ewoks actually have a lot of biological advantages at night as well. These were animals that evolved to hunt at night and therefore had extremely good low light vision, allowing them to clearly see their enemies by moonlight or no light at all. Which is especially terrifying for a human who doesn't have night vision. And should their vision fail to spot you, or you've tried to hide somewhere where the Ewoks can't see you, well, they have an amazing sense of smell, allowing them to track your individual footprints from a very far distance. So yeah, definitely don't spend a night on Endor unless you're behind a few feet of Durastal, have gigantic lights lighting the entire area around you up. When being assaulted by Ewoks at night, you'll be assaulted by all sorts of primitive weapons, magical fire-breathing fairy sprites, and furry fists. But should you hear the dreaded Ewok horn, you should know that all hope is probably now lost. The Ewok horn not only rallies other Ewoks within hearing distance to the battle, it also throws the Ewoks into a battle frenzy, increasing their strength and resistance to damage. Stormtroopers have reported Ewoks under the influence of the horn being able to take multiple blaster wounds and still rip out a Stormtrooper's intestine before finally getting blown up by a thermal detonator. So yeah, if you see an Ewok with a horn, make sure you shoot their face off with a blaster first. I'm gonna be straight with you guys. If you try to hunt an Ewok by yourself, uh, especially at night, you're probably going to die. Probably better off just hiring a transport that allows you to snipe the Ewoks from the air. It's a lot safer, it's probably more fun. But if you do get stuck on the ground, there are a few things you can do even at night to keep yourselves alive. First, make sure to stick with your group. Don't be a hero. Don't try to run off on your own and try to bag some Ewok all by yourself because it's not gonna end well. Also, don't think that by being by yourself, it'll be easier to hide. The Ewoks will find you because, as we said, they have an excellent sense of smell and night vision. Your best bet is to stick together, watch each other's backs, and get ready for a fight because they will find you in the forest no matter what you do. Now, ideally, you should find a defensible area that only has a few entry points, which will make it much harder for the little buggers to sneak up on you. I mean, look for things like bunkers or caves that really just have one or two entry points. It makes it a lot easier to stay alive. Now guys, if you don't have night vision and you can't really see that well at night because you burnt out your retinas playing video games in the middle of the night, I would be careful using other alternative light sources like fires or flashlights. Every time you use one of these light sources, remember the Ewoks will be able to see you from a far distance. Also, if you have a limited battery or for some reason that light goes off, 
you will experience night blindness at least for a few minutes and be completely vulnerable until your eyes adjust. Now guys, the Ewoks will eventually find you no matter what, there's no real hiding away from them. Now ideally you found a defensive position that you can hole up in and maybe even fortify, but let's say you're not that lucky, let's say you get caught in the open. Well most importantly, go back to back with your fellow stormtroopers if you're not alone, find an area that is relatively clear of tall grass or trees, that way you have a clear line of sight all around you. And most importantly, remember to keep trigger and fire discipline. Naturally, there will be all sorts of things moving in the night that will mess with your psyche, but make sure if you fire at something, it's not friendly. These little guys are not armored, and they don't take that much to take down. So be precise, be steady, wait for the right moment, so when that Ewok is about a foot away from you with a giant spear, you're able to take it out. Well guys, as you can see, this started out as a how to hunt Ewok guide, and it really turned out to how to survive Ewoks. You don't want to mess with the Ewoks, and there's a reason why corporations are trying to farm these little buggers and, you know, avoid sending hunters out to get them, because as you can see, there's a really high casualty rate. So guys, that is our video. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Are these tips helpful? Have they deterred you from ever going to Endor? Probably should. Or maybe you've hunted these Ewoks by yourself and want to give us some tips. We're always looking for new tips. It's good. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.